Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Tony Van Buren, and I'm on staff at United Way. Um, and we have some exciting uh, results to share with you um, about our first time EDI assessments. And a big thank you um, to Harlandale and Edgewood and San Antonio um, for piloting this project for us. We are delighted, um, and you'll hear more about that. I won't steal Casey's thunder. Um, I just wanted to say welcome and make sure um, that we knew that we have a number of elected folks in, in the room. Um, and representing uh, State Representative Mike Virial's yeah. office, we have, I saw Gina and Rebecca. I can't see beyond these lovely cameras. Thank you all for coming, by the way. Um, and I'd like to say thanks to Olga Hernandez from the school board for being here with us today. Um, and of course, uh, Bartel Zachary, who is the chair of the P to 16. Mr. Zachary, thank you so much for being here. And a number of other members. And I want to welcome Leo Gomez, who has been a great partner with us in a number of the work we've been doing over here on the east side. And so thank you, Leo, for being here. And then, of course, we have our superintendents, who you'll hear from in a moment. Um, but thank you, gentlemen, for allowing us to come into your districts and do this, this work. Um, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the results. Um, it's also uh, very telling about some other issues. With that, I want to introduce Casey Cox, who has spearheaded this project. She's our project director and handles all things early child. Um, first, we want to welcome Judy Ratliff and some of the students here at Tiny Noon. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them, so thank you to Judy. Would you like to say a few words? This is why we come to work every day. This is Jeremiah. This is Josiah. This is what we do. This is the work we do. My job is to get them ready for kindergarten. If I can get them ready for kindergarten, then when they are seniors, I'll go watch them graduate. That's what we're all about, because then they go get jobs. Thank you for coming. You are welcome in our building to see more of Jeremiah and Josiah anytime. We want to welcome you all. This is a great opportunity to really share some neighborhood level data with everyone. We know that all school districts are so inundated with assessments and different types of tools. So when we got this EDI assessment, the early development instrument, we really thought it was a great way to look at neighborhood level data instead of individual student level data. So as you can see on the maps behind us, we really got a snapshot of what the areas are looking like. Um, we're very fortunate at our first year of piloting, we were able to get over 3,500 assessments completed. Next year we're hoping for 10,000, so we'll be doing this all with um, 10,000 assessments next year. I first want to welcome some Sam Houston High School students. They're going to be here to present the data for you today and kind of go over what it all means. So Dallas Ross and Diamond Carlton are going to be presenting the data. Hi, my name is Diamond Carlton. Go to Sam Houston High School. And what I want to talk about is the chart. I see that the percentage of the development of vulnerability, vulnerability is low. And it should be lower than that because if we get, get our kids involved in pre-K, daycare, or child care, they'll be able to have, be more ready to go into kindergarten. Because the chart shows that the percent of children very ready is 30, between 30s and 20 some percent. If they're higher, we know that they're more ready to go into kindergarten. <laughs> and the percent of the vulnerability is low, but it should be lower because that means some of the kids are not going, or the parents is not willing to take them or not. So as with me, I was able to go to a kindergarten, a daycare, be able to prepare myself to go into kindergarten. So, and unlike Dallas, he was one of the children that didn't, wasn't ready or able to go to kindergarten. So when you went to kindergarten, he was the one to like cry or not ready to let go of his parents. <laughs> and with me, I was ready. My mom was there, I told her bye, and I was ready and prepared to learn. But in the case of how these should change, it all starts with the parents. It all starts if the child doesn't go into daycare, the parents should prepare them by at least reading to them, teach them something to do, or at least get them involved in something that will help them, help them be prepared to go to kindergarten. And that's all I know is that it all should start with the parents. But I'm going to pass it over to Dallas so he can tell you more about the chart. Thank you. My name is Dallas Ross, and I'm a junior at Sam Houston High School. And Donald Carlson, I didn't go to pre kinder or any child service um, progress or nothing. But that's why, that's why I love this chart right here, and that's what I love. That's what everybody's doing right now, because it preps, it preps, kids, it preps kids 
that's younger than me right now to get the education and get that kind of how would you say that chance that I didn't get when I was little because I cried I didn't I wasn't mentally I wasn't really socially I wasn't even academically prepared to be a kinder that's why I love that everybody's helping out and showing that there is a there can be a change in our community this chart that we are all looking at this legend shows the lowest proportion of development with vulnerability the the lighter the chart is the um, uh, they're doing good they're doing exceptionally well the, the more darker it goes, it's the highest proportion of de 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 developmentally vulnerability. As you look in some of these areas that are darkened, there is no type of child care. And those that are have child care, they're probably not doing as well as those that have child care centers. So in my, in my opinion, in my case, I believe that these child care that are doing good should come and collaborate with those that are not doing too well or not have none whatsoever. And that some of these some of these darkened areas should have more community assistance, like early educational services, basic needs, medical health services, and social services. There is no type of social services or community assistance in these parts and regions of this map. And I believe that if we come together and collaborate more with these parts that we can rise these, these how we say, developmentally vulnerability children, because the children are the future. These are the kids that are going to be taking care of us, myself, when I'm older. And I believe that if we can get this up, we can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. So these maps are really showing us areas that we need to either improve on or areas that we can collaborate and work. So it's going to adjust everything from not only where our nonprofits are going and our centers are going, but even policy decisions and things like that. So we're really excited to get back this information to really go forward and see what we need to do to adjust things. Um, I'm really privileged right now to introduce Mr. Ray Modrill from Harlandale SAISD is going to say a few words about their first year of doing assessments. Good morning. I am Ray Madrigal, I'm the Interim Superintendent of Harlandale ISD. I'm also Rod Kathy Brock, our Executive Director for Curriculum Instruction. And I uh, wanted to share a few things with everyone this morning. Of course, in Harlandale, we all understand the importance of early childhood education. I think many of our successes in Harlandale here the last number of years have been because some of the early interventions that we've implemented in Harlandale ISD. From this report, it's evident to us things that we already know in Harlandale ISD, that we have a lot of our students in our community that live in poverty, and what research tells us. So we take this study and this report very seriously. Some of the things that we've also done with our pre-K and pre-3, because currently we serve 1,273 kids in Harlandale ISD in pre-K 3 and pre-K 4. But this information, this data, helps us better understand and for us to come to realize what we need to continue to do, not only in Harlandale, but throughout the city of San Antonio for our kids that live in poverty. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Brooks so she can share some information on the study and the things that we've learned in HISD. I think one of the things we see in the study is that language continues to be a, a, an issue for children that grow up in poverty. Um, what we found before we had a large pre-K program was that um, many, many of our students came uh, in their entering uh, data at kindergarten one to two years delayed. We know um, research tells us that by age three, children who grow up in poverty have heard 20 million fewer words than children whose parents are professionals. Uh, that gap never closes. It gets, it decreases, but it continues to be an issue for all of us who work with children who, who live in poverty. We deal with the issue up through high school and college. Some of our college readiness issues are all related to the fact that our children have not had the experience with language at an early age. And we know that we would spend fewer dollars on intervention. We spend a fortune, all of us, on intervention beginning with kindergarten and first grade up through high school. And uh, putting our dollars wisely at, at, the, at the early uh, years with pre-K. The advantage to the uh, the study that we've just done, the, the assessment, we know um, in public school our, um, all of our decision making is based on data. And the more um, data we can get that's specific, specific to the geographic area, specific to the school, the better the intervention, the more targeted the intervention we can, we can offer to our children. And that's what this data has been able to do. It's been able to target for us every single school, every single community, and to tell us where our greatest needs are and what we need to do to, to intervene with that. And so we're very excited about the partnership and being able to get more specific data at a very early point so that we can uh, be more targeted, more articulate with our interventions. 
last year, and as Tony mentioned, we worked with SAISD, Edgewood, and Harlandale, and next year we're happy to add Northside Independent School District. So that's what's going to kick our numbers up to 10,000 students assessed. Um, I'm honored to introduce Mayor Julian Castro, who we are very fortunate to have as a very strong education advocate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank the United Way, uh, Tony Van Buren and all the United Way staff, uh, as well as P16. I see uh, Bartel Zachary. I see Harvey Najim. Uh, I want to thank Dallas and Diamond, who did a great job. Thank you all for relating your own personal experience. Uh, and the promised neighborhood folks who are here who are making a big difference uh, on the east side of the city and really throughout San Antonio. Uh, this is one uh, study that makes it very clear there's a lot of work to do to get our children ready to learn. Uh, our school districts are doing a great job with the resources they have, but it's a reminder that we need to be laser focused on those very early years, three and four years old, to ensure that none of our children get left behind that each and every one of them, the moment they walk into kindergarten, that they're ready to learn, that they're academically prepared, that they're socially prepared. That makes a difference to families across the city, and not only to families who are low income, but also to all of the other families who have children who are in classrooms with them. The fact is that today we have too many children that because uh, they walk in unprepared, the entire classroom is really held back because teachers have to, have to remediate uh, the, the children who didn't get pre-K. Uh, on the ballot this November, we have an excellent opportunity to make a very meaningful investment for a low cost in early childhood education through pre-K for SA. It is my hope that San Antonians will recognize there is a dire need out there to educate more of our young people well very early on, that we can do it at a low cost, that we can do it for children across the city, and go beyond the usual income guidelines that I know sometimes have limited its availability. Uh, and so I'm asking folks, in light of this analysis, uh, in light of the needs that are out there to support Pre-K for SA, it will make a huge difference in improving the trajectory of education in this city. With that, thank you.